post patch Jet Combat and Battlefield has changed. I think the biggest difference is that the the missile locks are much faster now. They require much less time to get a missile lock, and the air radar is less effective because below radar now stops your air radar. So if the enemy jet has below radar and flies low, he disappears on your air radar. So you'll only see him if he, you know, reaches an altitude of I don't know, like 100 meters or something. So a lot of low-flying helicopters you won't even notice on your air radar unless they have to get lift to get away from a guy firing a stinger. So I think that's those are the two biggest differences. I've heard that the uh, air-to-air missiles are broken, but I disagree. I still carry them, and I think that you know people didn't know how to use them properly before the patch, and they still kind of don't know how to use them properly after the patch. And they were never a surefire guarantee, you know, one for one, you know, disable, disable. They never worked that way pre-patch, and I didn't expect them to work that way post-patch, and to me, they still work the same. I still get all of my jet kills with pretty much just the missiles. So, going into maneuvering, flying low and maneuvering low in your airplane is far more dangerous than doing it in a helicopter. It's very easy to get into an accidental roll where you're about to crash, so you need to remember that you can pull down. You don't always have to pull up the turn, so if you're in this position, you can pull down, and that prevents certain death. So something to keep in mind, and also when you're dogfighting enemy jets, they don't expect you to turn that way by pulling down, and that's another difference post-patch. You pull down much more sharply and steeply than you did pre-patch. So I think as far as the maneuverability goes, it, it's much higher post-patch. It's a lot easier to fly the jets. Now, unlike the helicopter where you have to fly first person to see your heads-up display, most of your jet combat will be in third person because you need a wide view to see the enemy aircraft in the tanks and so forth. But once it comes time to use your missiles or your guns, you have to switch to first person so that you can actually see your crosshairs. But you are constantly switching back and forth and you do need to get the hang of it. Also, as far as the air-to-air -air missiles go, yeah, I mean, I, I think they, they disable usually at the very least when you do get two to kind of start striking the guy. So, I mean, to me, ultimately, yeah, they're pretty effective. Even though they're not quite as lethal as people would like, they're, they're reasonably effective, so. Now, when doing a strafing run, it's important to pull up much sooner than you think. You don't want to get so low to the ground that you crash. You want to pull up right about here, which I would say, you know, feels about... 40 meters off the ground, so you're pretty high off the ground when you need to start pulling up. Uh, anything lower than that, and you really are going to crash, and it's not very safe. And always remember to thrust as you pull up, which is, you know, hit the right trigger, otherwise you'll crash. And be aware of jerks like me, who, after killing you, do this, because, you know, we exist. And I don't always do it, but, you know, sometimes I just go on autopilot, because you're running away from a stinger, and you run away in the direction of, you know, the enemy jet, and you're just like, well, I'm here, okay. So, it's very easy to kill the tanks in one burst of your machine gun fire without having to have the upgrades equipped. I know they have upgrades that extend your machine gun fire, but if you're good at accuracy, you don't need it. So here, take a look at the air radar, and you will see the enemy jet disappear once he activates below radar. However, that little blip of him on the air radar for just that second was enough information so that I could basically zero in on him, get him marked manually, and start firing the missiles at him. So, you know, this is why I still carry air radar, because it's really hard for tanks or ground guys to kill me, because I can go so fast over the battlefield that, you know, really you pop flares, and by the time they can reacquire a lock, you're out of range. So it's, once you're good, it's pretty hard to get killed by ground fire. So this is why I do think that, yeah, you really should just carry the air radar and the air missiles. And I felt that way pre-patch, and I still feel that way post-patch. So I still carry the supposedly broken air-to-air -air missiles post-patch. And, you know, I, I will continue to carry them. I really like them. Uh, I see people in rocket pods, and they always have to kill me with machine gun fire. And they're good, but I don't know. I, I just like having missiles. I find it's, it's very helpful. So this is the guy getting revenge on me later in the match. And as I'm taking off, I see that, oh, wait. He was actually parachuting out to steal my jet. So I've seen this tactic before with helicopter pilots having passengers jump out to steal the jet. But I've never seen a jet jump out to steal a jet, so I just thought I would show that to be like, well, that's a tactic that's now happening. And I guess his plan was to have, you know, his teammate respawn in his jet, and then they would have, you know, all the air vehicles, and they wouldn't have to worry about me anymore. But that was not the case. So, going back to the 
air-to-air -air missiles. It's like you get the lock, you fire, and if you're really close range, then it doesn't matter if they have ECM or the flares because it just hits them because it's you know you're basically like almost 15 feet away from them by the time the missiles deploy. So it's such a you know short little walk that it's a pretty effective way of taking out enemy aircraft. And yeah, just showing. Once you take out all the enemy aircraft, uh, start taking out the armored vehicles, and once you take them out, at that point, you, I guess you could start mopping up actual individual ground personnel. But you really want to prioritize with basically, you know, air-to-air -air vehicles first if they're good pilots. If they're bad pilots, just ignore them and kill the armor. But if they're good pilots, you know, kind of take them out. And if you have air radar, you're going to know that the other pilot has air radar as well. Uh, pretty quickly because the fight's gonna the the dog fight's gonna keep going on for a very long time. So uh, my last bit of advice would be don't chicken fight the the enemy helicopters ever because they have a much more stable shooting platform and they'll pretty much always win if you chicken fight them. So I died in the last video chicken fighting a helicopter and I die in this video chicken fighting a helicopter. So you know. to go